So in this lesson, we're going to talk about relative rates of growth. Um, and once we see the definition of what it means to grow faster and grow slower, we're going to see that this definition allows us to categorize functions in terms of how they behave. So as a, an opening question, you, would, you might ask, for instance, if you look at this left graph, you know, which function grows faster? Most people and most students would say, well, g of x equals 3x because the slope is greater than the slope of f of x, which is 1. Um, but we're going to see that by the definition we use, they actually grow at the same rate. I mean, they're both linear, and so they grow. They both grow at linear rates. Uh, over here on the right, you're going to see that basically you've got a little hierarchy here. you got g of x equals e to the x, which is an exponential. Those, you can understand, grow very fast. Um, faster than linear functions, which, as you can see in blue, is f of x equals x. So that's kind of the the representative for all linear functions. And then logarithmic functions grow uh, very slowly. So they're all going to infinity, but they're going at different rates. And um, you know these these initial questions here, which grows faster and which grows fastest, we're going to be able to answer once we look at a definition of what it means to grow. Um, for a function to grow faster than another function. And it involves limits, which is why this follows off the heels of the L'Hopital's rule lesson. So our definition of growing faster or slower is written here. So it involves a limit. We compare the limits of the functions as x goes to infinity. Um, so again, we're, notice we're restricting x to be sufficiently large. Then as x goes to inf the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x over g of x, can, can uh, um, result in three different answers. If it results, results in infinity, then f of x grows faster. Again, the numerator is just outpacing the denominator. So as a, uh, in terms of our definition, we're going to say that that means f of x grows faster. If it approaches zero, that means that the denominator is getting bigger faster than the numerator is, so g of x grows faster than f of x, or f of x grows more slowly than g of x. But if you end up getting a number, we say that they grow at the same rate. <clears throat> so let me give you an example of the, the bottom situation. And again, a number not, not zero, clearly. Uh, so let's look at, let me give you an example um, of the bottom case. If you take, um, let's take, you know, an f of x equal to x cubed plus x squared. And let's say you had g of x just equal to x cubed, right? So if we took, if we compare them, let's say we wanted to know which one grows faster. Then we take the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x divided by g of x, which is the limit as x goes to infinity of x cubed plus x squared divided by x cubed. And you can see that this is going to be um, x cubed over x cubed is 1 and x, cube, x squared over x cubed is just 1 over x, and we know that this goes to 0, so this equals 1. So that implies that f and g grow at the same rate. All right, and so the significance of that is just we're now basically saying that you can kind of, you can produce a hierarchy of functions in terms of how they grow. These are both cubic functions. It doesn't matter that you're adding this quadratic. You know, it's this, they're both cubic functions, and we've just stated that they're essentially shown that cubic functions belong in the same category. They all grow at the same rate. They all grow like cubic functions. And it wouldn't even have mattered if I put like a, you know, like a, a five here or something, because that five would just show up here, um, here, and uh, and then ultimately here. You know, but it's a not. It's it's still a number. So. <clears throat> You know, any cubic function is never going to outpace another cubic function to such an extent that it's uh, that the ratio of the two functions is infinity. The ratio will always start approaching something, in this case, 5. So again, quadratics can be grouped together, cubics, um, all polynomials of a certain degree can be. So that just kind of gives you a sense of why this definition might make sense. So let's look at a, an example here. Um, this says, show that uh, e to the x grows faster than x cubed as x goes to infinity. 
This tends not to be hard to do because now that we have L'Hopital's rule, it's actually just a matter of evaluating a limit. So if we look at the limit as x goes to infinity of this ratio, and again, note it doesn't really matter what I put on top. Um, I just happen to choose e to the x. Um, so this, if you plug infinity in, you get infinity over infinity, which means we can use L'Hopital's rule. So if we use L'Hopital's rule, um, well, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, so you end up getting e to the x over 3x squared, which again is infinity over infinity. So let's just use L'Hopital's rule again. We get e to the x over 6x, and it looks like we're going to have to use it one more time because we've got infinity over infinity again. Finally, at this point we don't because you have infinity over 0, which is infinity. So again, we started with e to the x on top. We got infinity out, and by our definition, that means that e to the x grows faster. All right. So the result of that limit is, is your proof. This says, show that ln of x grows more slowly than x. So this is basically an argument that you know logs don't grow as fast as linear functions. Um, logarith logarithmic growth is like one of the slowest types of growth you can have. So we take the limit as x goes to infinity, and we'll take um, ln of x divided by x. Um, this is a infinity over infinity case, so we can use L'Hopital's rule. So this equals the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x divided by 1, but that ends up being 0. Since ln of x was on top, this proves that ln of x grows more slowly than x does. All right, so like the denominator is going to zero, to infinity faster than the numerator. Uh, and then we'll end with this interesting proof, I guess. It shows that all log functions grow at the same rate. So a log function, two different log functions would just differ by their, um, their bases. Right? So let's just say we have log base a of x divided by log base b of x. And so... Um, you can do one of two things here. You could either use a change of base formula, or we could just view this as infinity over infinity and take the derivatives. So, I mean, it is infinity over infinity. So let's just take, let's use the calculus way. We'll take the derivative. We'll use L'Hopital's rule. So I know these don't come up as much, but the derivative of log base a of x is 1 over x times ln of a. And the derivative of the denominator is 1 over x times ln of b. And um, this can be simplified. So if you just uh, rewrite this, you get x ln of b divided by x ln of a, which is just ln of b divided by ln of a, which is a constant. Right? It's just a number, which means they, blow, they grow at the same rate. So like logs are in their own category based on this definition. All right, so rates of growth we can um, rates of growth it allows us to sort out which type of functions grow faster than others. And uh, you can see that L'Hopital's rule is very useful in helping us to do this sorting.